grew up in suburban Boston in this little town in 78, 79, and it seemed like, you know, if you turned on the radio, everything you heard was the same. And around this time, WPCN, which was a local radio station, started playing local bands, and all of a sudden, it felt like there was this life that was happening outside of my little town. And I think part of my hunger in creating Gary was to feel like I could be part of that amazing time where music was alive and raw and visceral and they were talking about things that meant something. These are really complicated people. My central character, Tommy, one day he wakes up and the world is different. Everything that he believed is true is a lie. I don't know what happened. I was sleeping, and you, you pulled the covers off me, and I didn't, I was sleeping. How is he going to take the pieces, the chaos from Gary, and get out of it and make something real? You can create something beautiful out of the train wreck that your life is. And that's what he does, he makes music. You know, he turns all of that into music. Then once you have the script and you want to do the production, it's so collaborative. A play needs a million people to put it together. I had an opportunity to work with the composer, Rick Sims. You know, and I had, knew Rick was a punk rocker from Chicago and really understood the kind of music that I wanted in the play. And then all these poor actors have to learn how to play these crazy instruments. Um, our Tommy, who's the lead musician, he was already a musician. But Elise Manning has learned to play the drums and she's awesome. And um, they're like living my fantasy. 